in high definition from KGMB and KHNL. This is your source for breaking news. Hawaii News Now at 10. What's laid on the table against the chief is huge. That's one description of the FBI investigation into Honolulu's police chief and his wife, a high-ranking deputy prosecutor. We've learned the case has widened significantly and is now going in several directions. A second prosecuting attorney from the San Diego, California office has been added. She will be assisting the lead prosecutor, who was appointed by the Justice Department. We've also learned that a handful of witnesses have already testified before the federal grand jury, many of them police officers. The grand jury will decide whether police chief Louis K. Aloha and his wife Catherine will face criminal charges. Lynn Kawano broke this story months ago and brings us an exclusive report on the serious allegations against the chief and his wife. The most important thing to remember about this, this is not about the Kealoha stolen mailbox. This is a federal grand jury investigation into allegations of public corruption and civil rights violations. How a family dispute over money spiraled out of control and possibly turned criminal. In county of Honolulu. Of the city and county of Honolulu. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you. They're one of Hawaii's power couples. Politically connected, one controls the nation's 20th largest police force, the other, the head of the Honolulu Prosecutor's Career Criminal Division. But law enforcement sources tell me the FBI has called dozens of witnesses from all levels of the police department to testify against them. To understand how they got here, you have to go back to when Louis Kealoha was sworn in as chief in 2009, when Catherine Kealoha pinned the badge on his uniform. <laughs> Catherine threw him a lavish, almost $24,000 inauguration party a few weeks later. That money came from a bank account she shared with her grandmother, 93-year-old Florence Puana, who lived with her son, Gerald Puana, Catherine's uncle. But within months, $148,000 from that joint account was gone. That's when the relationship between the Kealohas and Puanas began to sour. The FBI investigation is looking into whether Catherine used her position as a top prosecutor and her police connections to gain an advantage in the family dispute. The grand jury is hearing about a number of incidents that raise red flags. By 2012, even more money is missing, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the joint bank account is closed. The grandmother sent this one-page letter to the Kealohas saying Catherine borrowed around $300,000. The grandmother asks for repayment of the money. Catherine sends an angry six-page response days later. She writes in all caps, I have never, will never, or would never borrow, take, or even request to borrow any money from Florence Puana. She also writes, I will seek the highest form of legal retribution against anyone and everyone who has written or verbally uttered those lies about me. It continues, they will rue the day that they decided to state these twisted lies. A year later, the Puana sue over the missing money. Catherine Kealoha is questioned under oath for the civil case on June 19, 2013. And just two days later, the now infamous overnight theft caught on surveillance video. The Kealoha's mailbox is lifted from its pedestal in the dark of night, but the crime itself is as fuzzy as the video, and the FBI is investigating whether the chief, his wife, and the police department violated the uncle, Gerald Puana's civil rights, deceived investigators, and abused taxpayer resources for their personal needs. University of Hawaii criminology instructor Aaron Hunger says the Kealohas should have immediately called in a different agency. We should, as taxpayers, never have had Honolulu Police Department, any of its services investigating this. This should have all been handled by the postal inspector. The first official report of the theft isn't made until 1.30 the following afternoon when Catherine calls 911. But what she doesn't tell the arriving officer or she doesn't know is that a detective from the Criminal Intelligence Unit, or CIU, had already been there since 9 a.m. and had already taken the surveillance video hard drive. 
The question of whether the Kealoha's hid the use of CIU officers is significant because the unit is federally funded and not supposed to be the chief's or his wife's personal security detail. CIU officers handled the evidence in the case, but none of that is in any official report. That job for CIU is counterterrorism, defeating organized crime, or reducing um, or analyzing widespread crime in the community. So who called CIU to the home? I know what it looks like and there's no preferential treatment. Louis Kealoha tells the media in the weeks later that he reported the theft that night to his assistant chief, implying that she called CIU. Kealoha defended the use of another specialized squad, the Crime Reduction Unit, or CREW which arrested the uncle on the street near his church on June 29th, just eight days after the theft, and just 10 minutes after Catherine Kealoha identifies him as the thief on the video. I never looked for uh, special privileges. I wasn't behind the investigation directing you know, the staff and, and, and the officers. Law enforcement experts say the use of both CIU and crew is out of line with normal investigative procedures for a theft case. And this is not about a mailbox that's been lost, stolen, or somehow tampered with. This is about a federal crime that wasn't turned over to federal authorities, was instead investigated by the victims in the case who overstepped their power and authority granted to them by this community. In 2014, as the mailbox case heads to criminal court, the uncle's attorney claimed that his client was framed by HPD and that the mailbox theft was staged because of the looming civil case over the missing money. A key to his case, the mailbox itself. The one police say was stolen is a deluxe model with a rounded roof worth well over $400. But the mailbox that Google Earth shows was at the home at the time, and the one shown on the video appears to be a Gibraltar brand aluminum box, which rarely sells for more than $200, half the value. The defense would argue that this proves the value of the missing mailbox was trumped up, so the charge would go from a misdemeanor to a felony. But... What they missed was that it was a federal crime. They didn't, they didn't even need to escalate the price in order to make it a felony. It was a federal crime to begin with. Before any of this evidence was presented in court, Chief Kealoha caused a mistrial when he blurted out a prior arrest the uncle had. Since then, police sources tell me the FBI has tracked down the Kealoha's hard drive. Agents were hoping to view hours of video from that night, instead of just the one hour saved by HPD. Instead, I'm told some of the video has apparently been deleted. Sources tell me it's been sent to Quantico, Virginia, to the FBI lab to try to recover some of the images. The federal grand jury has been hearing the case for several months now, but it's far from over. More witnesses are still being called and more subpoenas could be issued soon. I'm Lynn Kawano, Hawaii News Now. Now, it is important to point out the Kealohas did win the civil trial against the Puanas. The federal grand jury could also decline to charge them. We did ask the chief and his wife for comment on this story. Both declined. Meanwhile, the police commission says Chief Kealoha's job performance exceeds expectations. That was a result of his annual job evaluation. It says Kealoha was successful in effectively managing the department and ensuring that public safety was maintained at all times. He has been chief for six years. Kauai police.